Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the special live stream tonight about the fall software update uh, that just came out a few weeks ago for Snap-on Scan Tools. So we're going to go overview what all is involved in it, some highlights, and then we'll go a little bit deeper dive live on the tool with a couple examples of differences between the last update and the current update so you can actually see the differences and we'll walk through a couple live tests as well uh, using the simulator in there. So uh, if you have any questions throughout, and I'm expecting I might get some questions tonight because we always get a lot of questions on software. If you're watching on Zoom, just uh, look at the top of the bottom of your screen, wherever your Zoom controls are, you should see a little box that says Q&A. Click on that, type in the box, uh, your question, hit submit, and I'll get to those at the end of the session. Uh, if you're watching live on YouTube at the same time, just uh, please ask your question using the live chat. That's wherever it is on whatever screen you're watching it on. Uh, just type it into the live chat and I'll get to those at the end as well. So my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Snap-on's National Diagnostic Technical Trainers. Been in the training department the last eight years or so, traveling around North America, helping techs and shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, it was a couple of years as a diagnostic sales rep with Snap-on. So I had about 30 different Snap-on franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they serviced in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before that, it was eight years at Subaru. So uh, I guess over time at the dealership where I work, became the Diag guy in the shop. So I always ended up with the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth was trying to figure out all those weird head scratchers that would come in the bay. Then before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous wrenching jobs, been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. So let's talk about Software. First, we'll start high level, a couple of the key components to the software. First off, model year update, right? Whenever we update the tool, we always update the model years that we cover, and we have a wealth of vehicles that are covered under 2021 now. Uh, so let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different makes covered under 2021 vehicles now. So in, in addition to any we might have had in the spring as well. Uh, and then overall growth. Uh, you know, domestic system growth, 6%, European, 6%, 9% Asian. So that's over the previous software. If you're further behind than previous software, then, uh, the, well, way more growth that, that, that you would see. Uh, PID coverage growth, 9%, 4%, and then 13% functional test growth in domestic, 3% European, 2% in Asian. So that's kind of your high level. And you might think, well, 2021 model year, I, I might not even see one of those cars. Well, there are shops that might see a 2021 model year vehicle. Think body shops, think rental car facilities. They might need to scan some cars and they don't usually stick to one make. So they do need some sort of a, a, a ability to scan those cars. Think of sublet for rental car or body shop. So if you're to the shop that the body shop sends their cars to, to get diagnostic work done, then I guess you might need some 2021 vehicles. Think about glass companies. Right? If I'm a glass company, I could have a car with zero miles on it or one mile on it that gets a broken windshield. Uh, they might need to recalibrate something or they might need to at least do a pre-scan or a post-scan on there. And then also think dealerships, especially nowadays, dealerships are buying up used cars as, as fast as they can because they're having trouble getting new cars, right? So maybe they might need that 2021 year coverage too. So now not, that's not to say this that that's the bulk of the update because most of the update is on the older vehicles that you're actually seeing. If you're in an aftermarket shop, most of the most of the vehicles down back into the 2010s is what most of the update is focusing on it and filling in things that were missing before uh, and adding new functionality to the tool as well, including a new manufacturer, Genesis. Uh, you may have seen Genesis around. I actually saw one driving around today. Um, so we added uh, back to 2017 through current on Genesis G70, G80, G90. So if you don't, haven't heard of Genesis, what it was is back before 2017, the high-end, high-end model of uh, Hyundai that you could buy was called the Hyundai Genesis. And then they decided in 2017 model year to spin it off into its own, uh, I guess, luxury brand and to compete against BMW, Mercedes and such. Uh, and there's over 100,000 of these on the road right now in North America. So definitely a, a useful feature because you will see those coming into the shop at some point if you haven't already. How about engine special functions? That's where we spend an awful lot of time with our scan tools, engine functions, right? And always having those bi-directional control, those functional tests, those scripted tests available uh, just makes life easier, right? 
So I think about Alfa Romeo engine special functions for Giulia and Stelvio. Boy, those are hard to pronounce. Uh, BMW additional engine PIDs for auction sensor control. We had some PIDs in there and added uh, some more selections of PIDs in there to help with uh, uh, lean conditions, rich conditions, uh, auction sensor control type things. Uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram engine OBD freeze frame data right from the code menu. So that is uh, what they call environmental data on that. And I'll actually show you what that looks like on the tool in a little bit. Uh, additional engine special functions for 2017, the 2000 Jeep Compass. Volkswagen Audi Group engine management update test special functions in there as well. So many additional functions added. Ford F-Series suspension ride height calibration. So if you think the uh, the suspension that they have in there, you have to calibrate. There's four ride height sensors on the vehicle and it needs to be calibrated anytime you do suspension work. Uh, so that is an added function. We'll actually walk through that as well as the auxiliary transmission fluid pump priming. Now I, I learned a little something when I was researching about this. So the auxiliary transmission fluid pump is there on vehicles that have a start stop engine. So when I stop at the light, and the engine's idling, they use that auxiliary pump to keep the transmission fluid flowing so I can go when it's time to go. Uh, so when you do any transmission work with that, you do need to prime that pump. Uh, so that's an available test. Harley Davidson, right? Motorcycles. Uh, BCM replacement function. So you actually can take a BCM, replace the BCM, and then program the key fobs to it. Now we have programmed key fobs in the past, but it didn't cover all the motorcycles. So now it covers all 2002 to 2020 models on Harley Davidson. So if that's your uh, that's your thing working on Harleys, then you have that extra function in there now to BCM replacement and programming new key fobs to it. Uh, and then Jeep special functions, additional for TPMS, ABS, electric power steering, 2017 to 2020 Jeep Compass. Looks like it was a big update on that Jeep Compass model there. And I know I've been, I was looking through documentation. Uh, there's a lot of ADOS stuff added to Ford. There's a lot of uh, additional on Honda as well. Uh, another new feature, if you're using the free Snap-on cloud service, which I hope you are, and if you're not, uh, definitely a good idea to get set up because like I said, it's free. So what it'll do is you can upload your pre and post scans, uploads them automatically, uploads any ADOS recalibration reports off the tool, also uploads any screenshots off the tool up to this Snap-on cloud service. And then you can share them with your customers uh, or anyone else you need to share them with uh, pretty easily through one click. So to filter out all of the information that's in there, because if you do a lot of pre and post scans and you do a lot of screenshots, that's going to fill up pretty quick. And not, not that it fills up, there is really isn't a limit on space, but you're going to have a lot of documents in there. So one easier way to filter it is, is it'll auto tag some of the features of that report, say it's a pre-scan or a post-scan. But now also, if you add the license plate when you're IDing the vehicle, it'll automatically tag the report as well. So that makes it easier to search in the future when you have many, many uh, documents up there. Uh, so if you go in there, you can just type in the search bar and then it'll bring back any documentation on the screen uh, based on that search. So if you just tag everything with a license plate number, it's gonna make it way easier to see what's going on. Here's one of my favorites, because this is near and dear to my heart. We talk about this all the time on my other training class is the built-in training classes that are on the tools that have guided component tests. So any of the tools with a scope, so Zeus, Veris, um, Triton, and Modus, if they're updatable, which I think pretty much all of them are, some of the Veruses aren't, but the ones that are updatable, we'll see the classes move from the bottom to the top. So it used to be called training in classes and it was on the very bottom and you might have to scroll depending on the tool. Now it's just classes up on the top. So that's your built-in scope training. And there's over 65 categories of different diagnostic training classes in there. And as far as the guided component test is concerned, speaking of that, it is a mega update on guided component test meter. We do update guided component tests and both updates throughout the year, but usually historically the fall update is the larger of the two. So in this case, well, this is our fall update. So 57% growth in Toyota ABS tests. Chevy, 35% growth, Ram, 15% growth. And that's just over the previous spring release. 2.54% more engine tests across all these different brands. Now that might not sound like a large number, but that's over 73,000 tests across the board. 3.5% uh, more transmission tests. That equals 34,000 more tests. 8.66% 8 8 more ABS tests, 
that is uh, about 33,000 more tests there too. So a wealth of information at your fingertips if you have one of those tools with the scope with the guided component test module in there. And then service resets and relearns. This gets updated all the time as well. So this is actually an award-winning feature, won a P10 People's Choice Award in 2020. So thank you if you voted for us for that. Uh, but what it does is it automatically returns any services, resets, relearns, calibrations that need to be done after the repair right from the home screen. Now these get updated every time we do an update. So you, you might see the number, actually I will point that out to you. You'll see the number of tests available change from software update to software update. Generally we add more as we go. And then also if you haven't seen them, uh, we do a quick tip video once a month and it focuses on one of these particular service resets and relearns, whatever it might happen to be. This one right here happens to be on a Ford F-350 fuel injector replacement. You have to recode the fuel injector, they call it an injector quantity adjustment. So if you go to the YouTube channel, you can see we're actually actually getting ready to release number 15. We just approved it today. So number 15 is getting ready to go in the next week or so. We got 14 episodes up there already. So definitely check those out and see what that's all about, that service resets and relearns. Then we have this new screen that you may see. So depending on how your tool is configured, if your Wi-Fi is not turned on, and it's not set up, you will see this screen pop up. Now this is uh, reminding you to connect your Wi-Fi. Now, why do I need to connect my Wi-Fi? Well, a lot of things, you know, especially like the Snap-on Cloud service and uh, Chrysler Secure Gateway, if you have that functionality, that needs Wi-Fi. Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics, if you have one of those tools, well, that needs Wi-Fi. SureTrack, if you have one of the non-intelligent diagnostic tools, that needs Wi-Fi too. And there are some manufacturers that don't allow access to certain modules or certain functions on their vehicle without a Wi-Fi connection. Now, that's nothing really to do with us, it's the manufacturer, but it is seamless in the background. Some manufacturers decided not to go the way Chrysler did and they just made an agreement and said, okay, as long as it's on Wi-Fi and we can ping the vehicle, we'll unlock it. So there are some manufacturers that have it that way where you don't even notice that it happens until your Wi-Fi is on. Right, so you do need Wi-Fi in order to access those particular vehicles. So this is just a reminder. They'll tell you, hey, make sure your Wi-Fi is on, make sure it's connected, and we're gonna help you if you, if you uh, scan this QR code, it'll walk you through some videos on how to do it. And then if it goes seven days without connecting to Wi-Fi, it'll display again too, just so you know. So if you see that, that's why that's there, because Wi-Fi is very important nowadays. And then speaking of Wi-Fi and fast track intelligent diagnostics, which needs Wi-Fi, because it works on our data services, uh, it's the most sophisticated and intuitive diagnostic software ever created. Now, if you've ever used it, maybe you haven't used it. Uh, what it does is it takes, based on a code on a vehicle, it's, it's very specific down to the code, the engine, year, make, model, based on that code, filters down all the information on the vehicle based on that code. So how many PIDs do I need to look at for this code and gets rid of the ones that we don't need? How many TSBs appear for this code? How many real world repairs? How many functional tests? How many resets? How many guided component tests are available for it just for that one code? So I don't have to sift through 400, 500, 600 PIDs on a car. I don't have to make my own custom data list. I don't have to set my own uh, PID triggers for maximum and minimum flags. The tool does it for you automatically based on historical real world vehicles. All right, so huge growth in PID baseline, talking about the flags, right? The min and max values, two and a half million new PID baselines globally in the tool. Uh, updated PID mapping as well. So we may have uh, additional PIDs for a code. We may have, well, I guess we didn't need these three PIDs for the code and, and it might filter out that way. So we're constantly tweaking and adjusting the filters based on real world information. There's over 2.1 billion real world repair orders and over 200 billion scan tool events that we base this information on. So over 31,600 PIDs, 28,875 more vehicles and 24,831 more vehicles have got a component test baseline data, all just in the last six months since April. To 24 and a half million new repair orders added in that time as well. So a lot of growth when it comes to that in intelligent diagnostics, fast track intelligent diagnostics. I still have to teach myself to say that. Now you may be thinking, oh, well, what is new exactly? Other than these highlights that you're giving me right now, what else could be new in there? And does it do X, Y, Z on this vehicle? Well, the easiest place to find that out 
is going to be if you go to our vehicle coverage guide. It's interactive and you can go by vehicle, by system, and it'll tell you if it does tests, codes, functional tests, et cetera. So it's snapon.com slash VC guide. We'll open up that and it will uh, allow you to go through by scan tool to see what functions change. Also go by year, make model on a vehicle as well to see what they have available. Uh, you know, want to know what's the static and dynamic ADAS calibrations are out for by make and model. Now you can quickly find those answers when you go into the coverage search function as well. So there's a new coverage search function for calibrations there as well. So at your fingertips, totally for free. You can go in there anytime you want, you do it on your phone, tablet, whatever. Uh, just snap on.com slash VC guide, and that'll help you out uh, as far as what the coverage is. So if you have any specific questions for a vehicle, that'd be a good place to go. Also, if you have questions on that secure vehicle gateway I mentioned earlier, so Chrysler so far is the only manufacturer that is uh, requiring this secure vehicle gateway access, but it takes a couple steps to set it up. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, if you go to snapon.com slash gateway, we have a bunch of information at that website as well that allow you to help set up your secure vehicle gateway access on your tool. I will tell you that is one of the top calls we get at our tech support center right now is, hey, I'm having trouble with the secure vehicle gateway on this Chrysler vehicle, setting it up uh, and uh, accessing the vehicle, right? So sometimes there's like, there's a few steps you have to follow. And if you miss one, well, then it's not going to work quite right for you. So uh, definitely check out snapon.com slash gateway for more information on that. Like I said, there's a nice walkthrough video. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Now, have you ever been on your scan tool? And you've seen this. Fast track intelligent diagnostics not enabled. Contact your franchisee. My quick lookups are blurred out. Or I have my access to information has expired. See your sales representative to renew. That means if you see any of those messages or anything similar to those messages on your tool, especially if you have a tool with fast track intelligent diagnostics, so that'd be Zeus, any of the Triton or any of the Apollo tools, uh, those require access to our data services. So that's where intelligent fast track intelligent diagnostics comes from. That's where the quick lookups come from, the TSBs and sure track information actually comes from there as well. Uh, so for a fast track intelligent diagnostics capable tool, Zeus, Apollo, Triton, it does require either a software subscription or a prepaid data plan. Uh, so either way, that'll keep you up to date and that'll allow you access, continual access to all these functions. So we have the fast track intelligent diagnostics, snap on cloud, new and expanded coverage. If you don't update, well, you don't get your new expanded coverage either, right? Sure track, service resets and relearns, all of those go away if you go out of date on your non-intelligent diagnostics tool, if you go out of date, you lose a lot of information. And then on your fast track intelligent diagnostics tool, you also lose the fast track intelligent diagnostics function on the tool. And it is really powerful and helpful. And I know a lot of people say, well, this is a, it's a great function on the tool. Why isn't it working? Well, it's not working because you may need to do that software update. Now, if you have a software subscription or you have one of those prepaid data plans, how do you upgrade it? Well, you can upgrade it yourself. We made, added this function to a lot of the tools not too long ago on, on the more recent tools. And then we've always had that, or we've had this capability for at least a few years on some of the legacy tools that are a little bit older. Uh, but if I have a Zeus or a Veris Edge, very simple to update yourself. All you need to do is from this home screen here, you look down on the bottom left, you see that desktop button. You click on that, brings up your Windows desktop. And then if we look over here, we have this white square with a black square. We click on that and we can go to check for updates. We check on, check for updates. It's gonna check for updates for the shop stream updater and it'll check for updates for your tool itself. If there is an update available, like if you have an active subscription or you have an active prepaid data plan that hasn't expired yet, uh, you will be able to download that as well. And it will walk through the steps and it'll help you install it for you. Uh, now, if you have an Apollo D9 or a Triton D10, those are the newer models of those. Those tools have an on-tool updater as well. So you go, all you have to do is go into the tools menu and then you'll see software updates second from the bottom. Then you go in there and it says, hey, there's an update available or we'll say there's not an update available. It depends on whether you have an update available. Uh, you wanna make sure you're near Wi-Fi. You do wanna connect the power adapter. It actually won't let you continue until you have the power adapter connected. And then you want to leave the device undisturbed until the update is complete. And I will tell you, sometimes it could take a couple hours 
to complete. So what you want to do on this case is you want to uh, leave it maybe overnight, do the check at the end of the day, let it go overnight, and it should allow you to install when you come in in the morning. On the Zeus and the Veris, like I just described, if you download it in the background, you can still work on the tool while it's downloaded. So we'll go to download and install. We need to agree to the terms and conditions. Go there. And then it'll go through and it'll write it to the card. You'll see this black screen when it boots up. That's all normal. It's just going to go through a process of checking and installing. Then we press check to restart. We press check again to restart it one more time. And then you should be good to go. So that's all on tool, fully available. And then if you have the Apollo D8, Triton D8, Solus Series, Modus Series, Ethos Series, or P1000 with a software subscription, uh, then you would be able to update for your tool as well. Now, if you don't have a software subscription, you do still need to see your sales representative, whoever that might be. Could be a franchisee, could be an industrial rep, whoever that happens to be. Um, but you may see this screen up here and it's gonna say uh, upgrade may be available for your tool. Connect to ShopStream Connect or see your sales representative. So as I said, if you do have an active subscription, you can go in and uh, we go to tools and then we go to connect the PC. And then we hook up the USB cable on the top and we plug the USB cable into our PC. We download the free ShopStream Connect software onto our, scan, onto our PC. And then once it's in PC mode, we'll see that mode, uh, this example, it's a Modus Edge. So we'll see that over there. Once it's connected, and as long as it's on Wi-Fi, your computer, it will check for an, an update. If it does have an update, you just hit continue, it'll download it. Agree to the license agreement, download it. And then you can actually, while it's downloading, is once the process has started, the download process has started, you can then um, to unplug the, the tool, go work on some cars. Then it'll come back once it's downloaded, it'll say, hey, do you want to continue? Plug the tool back in with connect the PC mode on, hit continue, and it'll program the tool. So it doesn't lock your tool out, or you can use it throughout while it's, while it's doing that. Once again, gives you that splash screen. You hit check to restart, check to restart again, and you're good to go. Now, if you don't have an active subscription or an active uh, prepaid data plan, go talk to your local Snap-on franchisee, and uh, they can help you out as well. By the way, the best deal on software, I'm not going to talk about pricing. You can find that on your own because I'm not allowed to talk about prices. But I will tell you with 100% certainty that the best deal on software is a subscription. You pay monthly. And the yearly cost is about the same or less than what you'd pay for one software update just to buy it outright. All right, just so you know, software subscription is definitely the cheapest way to go for sure. All right, so let's talk about some live on tool stuff. I have two tools here that I'm going to hook up. First one is a Veris Edge, and this Veris Edge is on 21.2. So this is the spring update that happened back in April, right? So this doesn't have the current update on it. So I'm gonna show you the differences between this and my Zeus that has the current update on it. So first thing I wanna show you is in guided component tests. See how we have training and classes down here, right? Down the bottom says training and classes. I go over to my Zeus, go into guided component tests, current software, no training and classes down the bottom, they're up on the top. So if I go into classes, I have power user tests, features and benefits and how to. The how to is where the bulk of the information is. That is that 65 different categories of class that's in there. Anything from ABS class, uh, automotive electrics, waveform class, SCR class, pressure transducers, priority lighting, uh, running compression waveforms, et cetera, et cetera. A wealth of information in here. And these are just the categories. Underneath these categories, there can be multiple different tests, like in this test tips. We've got 13 different tests or different articles under test tips, right? So there's hundreds, hundreds of different scope training classes on the tool. Now these classes are on the older software as well. It's just the uh, the button to get there has been moved this time. So it's all, all the way up on the top. If you have current software, it's gonna be the first thing you see. So that's kind of a nice thing. I like that. All right, next thing I would like to show you. It's going to be, um, let's go here and we'll pull up the sky. Okay, so next thing is going to be, I'm gonna pull up this uh, Ram ProMaster. So let's say we're working on an Amazon van because that's pretty much what most of those are, right? Uh, diesel or gas, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we're gonna come in here. It's 
going to unlock my secure vehicle gateway and come in here and i want to talk about well first off first thing i want to show you is got 22 service resets and relearns available just remember that 22 service resets and relearns but if i go into engine and i go into codes you'll see it just gives me my codes all right just gives me my codes now if i go over to my current software and i pull up this ram pro master Go into scanner. Unlock my gateway. Okay. And then it sometimes it takes a second on this one for some reason to pop it up, but uh, there were 22. But let's go into engine. We'll come back to that. So we'll go into engine and we'll go into codes. And you'll see now I have the option to go into codes, which will just list the codes. And then we have this other one that's called environmental data. So what this does, if I click on that, it's going to list my codes. And then we'll see over here, we have this film strip. I click on the film strip. What that does is it gives me my uh, freeze frame data. Chrysler, Dodge, FCA, whatever you want to call them, they call their freeze frame data environmental data. And there's actually parts of their diagnostic flowchart where you would need to go in there and check the environmental data as they call it. Uh, so that is just a quick link right there from the code, right next to the code. If I had multiple codes, I'd have multiple links uh, to that environmental data, right? So that is, uh, that's pretty handy. That's pretty helpful because you always want to try and check that uh, freeze frame data there, All right? Well, it looks like it's not going to come up right now. That's okay. Okay, next thing. Let's talk about different numbers of tests. So there's a pretty popular vehicle out there. Let's call it a 2017 Mercedes Sprinter. There's a lot of different Sprinters out there on the road. I know I talk to people about them a lot. So on the Sprinter, I'm going to go in here and load this Mercedes Sprinter. 23 service resets and relearns. This one I know is going to come up. So just remember 23 service resets and relearns on the Sprinter. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11 systems. And then I have service reset and I have oil specs. So I don't count those as systems. So there's 11 systems on a Sprinter on previous software. Now, if I go over to my Zeus with 21.4 current software, pull up the same Sprinter. Thirty one service resets instead of twenty three. So there's a change there. Notice how that does get updated. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 systems on this Sprinter. We did a massive update to system coverage on Sprinter vans. Pretty much, I think it was 07 and newer is what they said. So 07 and newer, they added up to 27 new systems, depending on what you had for a vehicle and how the vehicle is equipped. So that is a huge update, just allowing you to work on more stuff on a Sprinter van. So I know if uh, any of you who have one of these tools out there that has a Sprinter or work on a fleet of Sprinters, that's going to be a, a huge, huge help to be able to go into any of these extra systems that we didn't have prior to this. So that's I, I thought that was kind of a nice one looking through there looking through the documentation to see what we had available. So up to 27 new systems, depending on how the vehicle's equipped on a Sprinter. Then the last one I'll go through uh, in this course, we're gonna go into uh, this Ford F-150 2019, Ford F-150. Okay, it's an F-series, go. Okay, so 23 service resets on this one. Uh, but what I wanna talk about is going to be the suspension. So if I go to steering and chassis, the only thing listed is power steering control mode. Go over to my Zeus and load that same vehicle. We go all the way down to steering and suspension and we now are steering and chassis. We now have this vehicle dynamics module 
So the vehicle dynamics module works with the adaptive suspension system on there. So we're gonna go in here. We have codes, data, and functional tests. So special functions in here is a ride height calibration. So as, as I said earlier in the presentation, if you were here, uh, we, there are four ride height sensors on these vehicles and you need to calibrate them. So procedures used to calibrate each of the four suspension height position sensors to the vehicle suspension position. Before performing this procedure, please make sure the following operations are completed. There must be no suspension height sensor fault DTC, so they all have to be in working order. Vehicle must be on level ground, no occupants in the vehicles. We wanna have it at its curb weight, essentially. The height sensor calibration routine should not be performed with the vehicle raised off the ground, because then it's a, your suspension height's gonna be way off at that point, or immediately after lowering the vehicle as the suspension will not be in a neutral position. As you know, once you lower it, it's not always quite where it needs to be. Uh, to neutralize the suspension, back the vehicle approximately 50 feet, and then back into the stall, and then continue with the calibration procedure. So you gotta back it up and pull it forward about 50 feet. And then see workshop manual for further details. If I hit continue, it's gonna ask me how full is my fuel tank? Cause that matters. So let's say it's three quarters full. It's gonna go in, load the function. And it's gonna give us a 10 second wait. It's gonna give us a calibration status, whether it's performing the status or not, since I'm not hooked up to the truck, it's just gonna give me this NA. Then we'll turn the ignition off, turn it back to run. And it just says now function complete. It's recommended you perform self-test and clear the DTC. All done there on the vehicle dynamics module. And that is the right height calibration. Doesn't take very long, but you got to make sure the vehicle is set up. That is important. Oh yeah, 37 service resets on this vehicle. As opposed to, where are we at? 23 service resets on the, on the older software. And the last thing we'll touch on is that transmission auxiliary fuel, uh, fluid pump. Going to transmission, functional tests, special functions, one, two, three, four, five, special functions, nothing about that auxiliary pump. If I go over here, uh, my Zeus current software, transmission, functional tests, special functions. There's my extra auxiliary transmission fluid pump priming. So you're gonna cycle the key and then uh, it'll say, uh, sure the ignition is on and engine is off. Transmission fluid temperature above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, command electric transmission fluid pump control duty to 80% for 30 seconds. Carry out a road test until there's a stop start event. So you gotta drive it until you stop and then the engine shuts off. If the restart is harsh, repeat the transmission fluid pump prime procedure. So this allows them to take off without it being a harsh start. Continue the road test and evaluate each stop start event. Repeat the prime procedure until three consecutive normal stop start events are achieved. Check the transmission fluid level and rerun the self test and clear codes. I continue where it said run it up to 80% for 30 seconds. So it's going to start at 15%. It'll show you your data down here. Now, of course, this is dummy data because I'm not hooked up to it, but I'll run it up to 80%. In 5% increments, run it for 80%. Count in your head, 30 seconds. Once we're good with that, probably want to bring it back down. It'll return the module in normal state anyways when you hit exit. Hit exit, drive it. Do a start stop, see if it's harsh. If it's not harsh, you're good. If it is harsh, do it again. Uh, so that's just kind of a relearn and bleeds any air out of that pump that needs to be bled out of that pump in order to get that transmission working properly. All right, so that is my presentation. A little bit of deep dive there on the tool. I know we've not really done that before, so I thought that was kind of an interesting idea to do that. So with that, if you have any questions on anything I've covered so far, any software questions, I'm not really going to get into, oh, I have a 2000 and something Buick and I need to know how to do this. We're not really, this isn't really the place for that, but you can go to our website and find information there. But if you have, inf you know, if you're wondering certain in issues about software uh, or you have any general questions about our software, please feel free on YouTube, put them in the uh, live chat on uh, Zoom, put them in the Q&A box, please. And I will definitely get to those questions. Uh, so I'd also like to mention that we also do free training, free uh, technical training. I do free technical training every Tuesday, uh, six and nine Eastern as well. So you may have been to one of those, but if you haven't, definitely would, would love to have you. If you wanna join on Zoom, you go to snapon.com slash OT. 
Session one, the 6 p.m. Eastern session goes to YouTube like I'm doing right now. And then session two streams live to Facebook, to my Facebook page. So it's facebook.com slash snap on Jason is where you can go to check that out. Uh, so once again, every Tuesday, two classes. If you want to check out any of our previous live streams that we've done as well, uh, you can check out. We have 27 different episodes and new classes actually start on Tuesday. So we'll have five new classes starting on Tuesday. So we have 27 now, we'll have 32 by the time we get done there. We have things like ADOS, data bus testing, uh, module setup, and a bunch of component testing we've been doing over the summer, talking about individual components and how they work and how we test them. So definitely worth your time, I think. Uh, if you want to come check check it out, go to youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe. Hit the little notification button next to the subscribe. Make sure you know next time we go live or next time that we, uh, we, we post new content, right? We post new content a lot on there. So uh, definitely come check us out if you, uh, if you have the time. Now let's look at questions. So let's see, a couple of people. Hello, Felix, Gene, and Agresita on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking in tonight. If you do have any questions, please put them in the live chat there. And then uh, Tony. Uh, Tony asks, will this video be uploaded to YouTube and a rough ETA? So as soon as YouTube's done processing it, because I'm recording live to YouTube right now. So I, I bet that answers your question, right? So uh, yeah, so definitely it will be available on YouTube soon within the hour, I would imagine, because it is uh, just pre-recorded live stream. So if you want to use that. And by the way, if you missed anything, or if you think of a question and you want to ask it again, uh, we are going to be doing this again next Wednesday, same time, same place. Next Wednesday, 8 p.m., we'll be doing this again. You can ask your questions live if you come up with any more. Uh, and then the following Monday, we'll be doing it again as well. So if you want to catch it live to ask your questions, you're always more than welcome to watch the replay. But I know some people like to watch live and actually be able to ask the questions and get that live response, right? So uh, let's see. Felix... Can you sometime make a class about using expert mode in Euro models? That has been kicked around quite a bit. There is a lot to it. So it's going to take us a little while to build that up. Um, but we have been thinking about it. So uh, can look forward to that at some point. I just don't know when that'll be. Uh, just because, like I said, there's a lot involved in building a class on that. So uh, definitely ha have been thinking about it, though. So thank you for that question. All right. Let's see. See a lot of DSDs on here on Zoom. Thanks for joining me, guys. Appreciate you taking time out to learn a little bit more. I know you guys talk about this all the time anyway, so definitely glad you guys can make it out. Check it out. Hopefully you can use this in your day-to-day. -day. All right, with that, I am not seeing any other questions come through, and that is fine. Um, if you do have any questions coming up, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, just uh, leave a comment under the video. I try to check those periodically, at least uh, not as not as quick as live, but I do try to check them periodically. So definitely uh, make sure you check that out. Uh, leave us a uh, leave us a comment there if you do come up with a question or join us next Wednesday. You can do that as well. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time out of their busy day to come and join us and learn a little bit more about our fall software release there. So. Definitely appreciate it. Take care over the rest of the week. Have a nice weekend. Maybe we'll see you next week on one of our other training classes, or hey, maybe you want to come back to this class as well. It's just fine. So thank you very much. Enjoy your evening and uh, take care.